Hello and welcome back to Project 380. In this video, I'm going to be finishing off the downpipe. In a previous video, I welded this downpipe all up, but it wasn't quite finished as I needed this little bracket here that secured it to the gearbox. So off of camera, I've welded up that nice little bracket there and that should support the downpipe nicely and take a little bit of weight off the turbo. But I think it's still not quite finished. In the area where the downpipe sits, there are a few components I really don't want to get warm. And the other day, I thought I'd try out some Funk Boater Sports heat wrapping on the screamer pipe. And I think it turned out really well. And I had some left over, so I wrapped these two heater pipes here. So hopefully they're protected a little bit now. But I can't simply heat wrap everything in that area. So I've got some more heat wrap to do the downpipe. I just want to start out by saying this is not a sponsored video, but I've used cheaper versions of heat wrap many times before. But this heat wrap from Funk Motorsports is so much better. On the screamer pipe, I used the Lava Rock Titanium Wrap, which is 25mm wide, and it worked really well. I think the end product turned out really neat. But on the downpipe, I'm going to be using the 50mm version. This heat wrap is pretty easy to install. Unlike the cheaper versions where you have to soak it and keep it wet, the Funk Motorsports one can wrap on dry. But you probably still want to use gloves while handling this, as it does get a little bit itchy. When wrapping your exhaust, there's a few things to consider. Are you going to have to wrap around anything like a bracket or a sensor hole? And what angle are you going to be looking at the exhaust from? Let me grab the screamer pipe to explain a bit better. Due to the way you wrap the pipe, it will always look better from a certain angle. With the screamer pipe, I started from the V-band end and ended at the tip. Because I'll be looking at it from this way, it doesn't look anywhere near as stepped. Whereas if you look at it the other way, it doesn't show up too great on camera, but there is quite a stepped effect. So take this into consideration when you're starting to wrap your exhaust. Because I know I'm gonna be looking at my downpipe from this angle, I want to start wrapping the pipe from this end, just so it looks better from in the engine bay. But that does mean I'll be starting right where the sensor hole is, leading straight onto the bracket. So once you've planned out how you're gonna wrap your exhaust, we're gonna give this a good clean, as once the wrap's on, you can't clean it anymore. So we wanna make sure this is clean of any contaminants. I'll be completely honest, I actually used some of the 25 millimeter stuff to start off around here, as the gap between the sensor hole and the V-band was quite narrow and the 50 mil didn't look quite right. But now from here on up, I can start using the 50 millimeter stuff. And from my previous experience with the screamer pipe, I found this wraps better one way rather than the other. If you look closely, there is a slight edge to it and it looks better if you overlap on this edge. It squishes this down a bit and it looks a lot neater. So to start the first wrap off, wrap it round, and if you get it tight enough, you shouldn't actually need to use a cable tie to secure this down, and then carry on from there, overlapping at least 50% on the way up. Now you don't have to keep too much tension on it, as it will deform the wrap a little bit, but just apply a little bit of tension as you go around, just to keep it nice and neat. Try and keep the overlaps as uniform as possible, now it's going to get a little bit different once it comes to the bend, as it will be overlapping a lot more on the inside of the bend than it will the outside, but just try and keep it as neat as possible. Now I've got a bracket right on this bend here, so it's going to be a little bit awkward to wrap around this. I am going to have a couple of spots without any wrap on it, but if you wrap it as close as you can and sort of curve it round, covering as much area as you can without bulking the wrap up all in one place. Once you're happy with it, or as good as you could get it, along the straight, you can continue as normal. Once you're all the way at the end of the pipe and you're happy with how that sits, you can find a place that isn't going to be too noticeable to cut the wrap. So I'm going to choose this side of the downpipe, which is between the turbo and the engine, so it shouldn't be too noticeable. So I'm going to pull that back a little bit, and this wrap can just be cut with a normal pair of scissors. Now this is going to be the difficult bit, finishing off the wrap with just one pair of hands. We need to secure that wrap down with a metal tie wrap. Trying to tighten this down while keeping the wrap tight can be a little bit tricky.
Now there are special tools to do these tie wraps, but if you haven't got any special tools, just use a pair of needle nose pliers. With the 50mm stuff, you're probably going to have to use a second tie wrap. Nice and secure something like that. Now you can go along and trim these frilly edges with a nice sharp pair of cutters, but don't go cutting too much. That's turned out really neat, I'm really happy with that. But before I put that back into the engine bay, there's something else I want to address first. While I was assembling this engine and planning the downpipe, I was using some mild steel studs with some brass nuts. And I'm pretty sure at some point these will fail. And I've seen many builds with the downpipe backing off. So I don't trust these at all. And I'm gonna upgrade that to some titanium studs with bihex nuts and a Nordlock washer. I'll first put a little bit of high temperature retaining compound on the thread. I can screw that into the turbo. These titanium studs have got an allen key in the end so I can snug those studs down. All the studs are snugged down. It's time for the gasket. Now the downpipe is finally ready to install. I haven't put the wide band sensor in just yet, that will come later. That's just held on loosely with one nut for now. I'm gonna go underneath and secure it to the gearbox with that new bracket I made and then come back and do the other nuts. All secure now down at the gearbox and it's time for the last few nuts. Now I'm using Nordlock washers with these. These are a really good addition if you have any doubts that this nut may come undone. So I'm gonna put them on the studs first and then the bihex titanium nut. Then we can tighten the downpipe the joys about these bihex nuts is you could put a lot more torque into them. It's a shame to hide the nice stainless steel downpipe, but this Funk Motorsports heat wrap makes it look really good. And it's going to protect everything around it from the heat, so hopefully I won't have melting paint and melting lines, and it should improve the exhaust flow. Now I really need a turbo hot side blanket to go with that. That will really complete the look. So that's the downpipe finally fully installed with some Funk Motorsports Lava Rock heat wrapping. If this video helped you wrap your downpipe, leave it in the comments down below. As per usual, like and share this video, subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you in the next one. Put them on the studs first.